Hi everyone, I think it's time to continue my story about the new tomato varieties from the Starfighters line. I have something special for you today, so let's not waste a minute and get to the review. Tomato Express is on its way. Take your seats, we're getting started. And since I have the honor of being the first to tell you about these varieties in detail, I'll try not to miss anything important and be as objective as possible. And I suggest that we begin our acquaintance with the new varieties in this line with a story about the dwarf Rebel Starfighter Grandpa's Heart Tomato. Plants with a height of about 3 feet 3 inches or 1 meter have a rather unusual appearance, which is often characteristic of indeterminate varieties with heart-shaped fruits. The only difference is that Rebel Starfighter Grandpa's Heart is a dwarf tomato. And this feature is its leaves, which stretch downward and look like the plants need watering. So it took me a while to get used to this feature of the variety. The tomatoes are elongated, heart-shaped, with a recognizable tip, characteristic of its ancestors from the Starfighters family, such as Prime and the VT-16. The pattern is still as abstract and unusual, but in this case, the tomatoes are bright red with yellow stripes. The fruits have thin skins and can crack from excess moisture, especially when grown outdoors, so limit watering if possible. The tomatoes weighed over 10 ounces or 300 grams, which is a very decent result for such graceful plants. As soon as I cut them open, the aroma immediately filled the whole kitchen. The flesh is also bright red, juicy, with very few seeds, and the taste is both sweetness and tomato acidity. It's no big deal that they cracked, it had absolutely no effect on their flavor. By the way, Dwarf Rebel Starfighter Grandpa's Heart is a favorite variety of Ross Crow's parents, because they like tomatoes with acidity, and I totally get it. Although these hearts certainly have a fair amount of sweetness. In addition to the good taste and interesting and colorful fruits, I would of course once again note the unique appearance of the plants, which could be instantly recognized among the more than a hundred tomato dwarfs planted nearby due to the specifics of their foliage. They are simply unlike any of the dwarfs I've ever grown. What could be better than a walk in the moonlight? You know, perhaps the flavor of the Rebel Starfighter blends Moonlight Tomato. I consider it one of the best varieties in the Starfighter series, and here is why. Rebel Starfighter Blends Moonlight is an indeterminate, high-growing tomato variety that was about 6 feet 2 inches or 1.9 meters tall by midsummer when grown in two stems. The fruits are dark red, wine-colored with green streaks. They were most often elongated, slightly heart-shaped, but sometimes grew more flat-rounded. The variety is the result of crossing Moonlight Mild Tomato by Blaine Horton and Rebel Starfighter VT-16. And in my opinion, the result is excellent. And as you will soon find out, the appearance of the fruit is not the most important merit of the Rebel Starfighter Blaine's Moonlight variety. Although, to be honest, I had no idea what to expect at first tasting. During weighing, the tomatoes ranged from a modest 5 to a rather serious 14 ounces or 134 to 409 grams. And then the fun part began. Take a look at this cut and tell me, only honestly. Can a tomato like this not be delicious? Of course it can't. Pinks, cherries, grains, all blended into one unified and unique picture. And the first thing I thought when I tasted a small bite of it was, that's just great. It made me feel like I'm over the moon. Rich, fruity taste, sweet with a pleasant tomato acidity, which in brilliant proportion with sweetness creates a deep and unforgettable flavor. Having such tastings is a pleasure for me, because it's simply impossible not to fall in love with this flavor. Rebel Starfighter Blaine's Moonlight is a gorgeous, exotic, fragrant tomato, and I was stunned by its flavor. In my opinion, one of the most delicious varieties in the Starfighter line in the season and perhaps in general one of the most delicious varieties in my tomato career. And moving on to another newcomer from the Starfighters family called Dwarf Rebel Starfighter Penny Lane. 
This is a rather tall dwarf with a height of about 3 feet 7 inches or 1.1 meters. The stems are typical of most dwarf tomatoes, strong and sturdy. The foliage is wrinkled and very pretty, appearing as if it's slightly fuzzy. By the end of the season, when the weather was cool and wet, and many varieties outdoors were already affected by disease, dwarf rattlesnake fighter Penny Lane looked perfectly healthy. The fruits are quite large, round and heart-shaped, and the coloring is dominated by red and green tones with the green stripes at some point taking on a noticeable metallic tint. As I expected, the tomatoes weighed over 7 ounces or 200 grams and were about the same size throughout the season. Inside, the flesh is the color of ripe gooseberries with flecks of pink tones. As for the taste, this is another fruit and berry flavor from Ross Crow, and it's not surprising when and the breeder pays all his attention not only to the appearance of tomatoes, but the main thing for him is the taste. It simply couldn't have led to any other result. The Wharf Rebel Starfighter Penny Lane is an absolute pleasure. A tomato with a balanced and rich flavor, and I didn't doubt it, but it's nice that I was able to see it for myself. And now I'm going to tell you about a variety that literally delighted me. It couldn't be otherwise because it's called Dwarf Rebel Starfighter Dipper's Delight. And I'm especially pleased to tell you about it because I think it's one of the most beautiful tomatoes I've ever grown. But it also has other advantages which I will tell you about right now. Dwarf Rebel Starfighter Dipper's Delight Small plants reaching a height of only about 3 feet 3 inches or 1 meter have grown equally well for me both in the greenhouse and outdoors. The fruits are very beautiful, and I think the camera is not even able to convey this beauty. They must be seen with your own eyes. Just some unreal combination of red, bronze, green, orange tones combined with a huge number of anthocyanin. It all combines to create an incredible visual effect. These flat round beauties, in my opinion, are probably the most beautiful of the dwarf tomatoes in my collection, and there are enough very pretty tomatoes in it. Although, of course, this is my subjective opinion, I enjoyed contemplating them all season. In addition, the tomatoes are large, although the plant itself is quite modest. I can say with full confidence that now my tomato career is divided into before I grew the Dwarf Rebel Starfighter Dipper's Delight and after. The first harvested tomatoes weighed in the range of 5 and 7 ounces or 150 and 200 grams, and at the height of the season their weight was already from 12 to almost 14 ounces or 355 to 388 grams. This is a worthy result and now let's talk about the main thing. On the cut, the fruits look in the best traditions of tasty tomatoes. Dark red, slightly chocolate color with greenness in the seed cavities, and really corresponds to their taste, sweet and, that is no less important, intense tomato flavor, with a small and pleasant acidity, very juicy. There are still varieties that combine beauty and richness of flavor. Rebel Starfighter Dipper's Delight is another work of art for the inhabitants of the tomato world, and it is really a delight. I have the impression that when people are breeding primarily for the soul, and I mean not only Ross but also many other amateur breeders, the result will be appropriate. Probably it can be said about almost any sphere of our life. Agree, it's hard to imagine a talented composer or artist creating a masterpiece solely for the sake of a fee and not because he loves art and it's the source of his inspiration. So don't forget that a tomato is not just a thing you eat, it's a breeder that tells you bon appetit. And of course, I was just obliged to ask the author to tell you a little story about these varieties. I promise, now you'll learn a lot of interesting things. And I passed the word to Ross Crow for a while. Good morning, Alex. So Grandpa's Heart started as a cross of prime to coastal pride orange and in a grow out of that one summer my parents were up visiting and took a couple of the couple of the tomatoes back 
and it is my mother and father's favorite. It is one that he kept growing down in Florida and would send seeds back for, and it is it is one that I released just because it seemed pretty stable. It was cool looking, and it was, and it was my mom and dad's favorite. Blaine's Moonlight started out as a desire to kind of pay homage to to my friend, my mentor, uh, Blaine Horton. So it's a cross of his Moonlight Mile to Prime. The hope was to kind of have that Moonlight Mile style tomato with maybe a little bit of antho, maybe give it more of a heart shape, but to definitely kind of combine something that he helped me create. He was instrumental in kind of the creation of Prime and the original grow outs of Prime and the the support. And I know he was very he was very passionate about Moonlight Mile. So I kind of wanted to do something for him. And then in return he did something for me. When I crossed uh Pit Viper to VT16 and started growing it out, he found what he named as Penny Lane and thought that it was the superior selection uh, in that line. And then when it came time to selling seeds for that or thinking about selling seeds for that, he named it Penny Lane and decided that at that time my wife was re-diagnosed with with, uh, stage four metastatic breast cancer and he decided that um, when he released it on Galactic Magic Seeds, that a rather large portion of, of the proceeds from the sale of that would go towards American Cancer Society and breast cancer research. And then Dipper's Delight was a cross that I had made of uh, Blaine's King Aramaeus with Prime and the dominant selection that that my daughter preferred and I preferred. Uh, was not a heart-shaped tomato, was more of a beefsteak tomato, but with that really beautiful kind of dark maroon, almost burgundy colored flesh with those those green stripes and those antho shoulders. My daughter started a, a fast, be, became fascinated with, with tarantulas many years ago and, and arachnids in general. And at the time that we were settling on that particular segregate and thinking about releasing it. Um, She had a jumping spider, which is a very small, more or less house spider that we all have, but they, they're visual hunters and she, and they can become pretty, pretty docile. And she had one that she named Dipper. They're not really any bigger than the size of a nickel. And uh, she would have it out for, uh, quote unquote, enrichment on the table all the time. She was she just really was attached to this little spider. She would feed it, hand feed it. It's just a, it was just a, you know, a 10 year old girl and, and her spider, which is a little uncommon. But she had named the dipper, the spider dipper, and she named all of her spiders uh after the different constellations and times of the year and so when it came time to release this variety we named it after the spider so um maybe not everybody's cup of tea to have a a room in their basement full of tarantulas and jumping spiders but that's kind of a along with growing in the garden that's kind of a passion for for my daughter and i a connection a way for us to to connect so I hope that helps. These are all little passion projects of myself for myself. That Are they the best things that I have done? Nope. I think VT16 and based on popularity, Prime are the things that I, that are probably the best things that I've done. But in all the other things that I've done, I've tried to lend a little bit of the best of those varieties to to other things, you know, try and bring a little bit of a different shape or a little bit of a different stripe or add antho, but without that super dark antho that we often see in something like indigo rose. I always felt like uh, antho was better as an accent. That's why you see those uh, you, you see those stripes in some of my varieties. So hope this helps and uh, we'll talk to you soon. I can only disagree with Ross on one point. I do not believe that any of these varieties can be unequivocally called the best. All of them are unique in their own way and I'm sure that each of you will find your favorite. 
This was a review of new varieties from the Star Wars line. Honestly, this tomato series has become one of my favorites, and if you are not familiar with it yet, I highly recommend that you do so and grow at least a couple of varieties. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe and of course, love tomatoes, grow tomatoes. This is the Lucky Garden channel and see you soon. Just hold on for dear life Yeah, I can't give up this feeling That I get when looking down for this time Oh, now we're through, oh, oh.